So I hope you are doing well guys and especially the weather from where you are watching this video is not as bad as what I'm having here in Paris today. Now it's like if you look from my window it's very gloomy, it's very rainy and it's very very cold outside. I well, know it's it's okay, it's the winter season, nothing special, <laughs> we're gonna just stay inside trying to chill and to especially learn some some interesting stuff about React Jazz today. So the previous video we talked about some simple notions like dynamic class holders, like props, and we developed a simple bookshelf application with a static list of books. But in today's video, we're gonna go one step further. We're gonna try to make our application more interactive so the user can input data into a user interface and add the new book to the existing list. So we're gonna try to understand some key concepts of React.js today, like hooks, like states, and like props using functions this time. So without further ado, let's just get into it and start coding. Let's go into our components folder and I'm gonna create a new file. Let's call it newbook.tsx. Then I'm gonna use React Sniper extension shortcut AFCE to create a new arrow function component. Now let's go back to our app parent component so we can include the new book tag. Don't forget to import it within app.tsx. Then if we go back to our screen, we can see that we are displaying the new book text. Let's open back our new book.tsx file and we're gonna change this text into a React form. As you may have guessed, with this form, we're gonna be able to add a new book to our bookshelf. So for that, we're gonna go to the book card so we can copy paste our pre-configured card into this new book.tsx form. And of course, we'll be customizing this card so we can give the user the possibility to input new data for its new book. Don't forget to add all the needed imports, the style imports as well. And at first, we will remove the errors we see here by replacing all the variables with simple string or number values. As you can see, we have now a new empty card just before the list of the books we had previously. Let's look for a text field that we can use from the MY library, giving with that the user the ability to input the title and the author of the new book. So we're gonna copy the standard text field and we're gonna pass it instead of the typography of the title within our card. We will update our import from the MOI material and we're gonna update the label from Sanders into title. Our text input is displayed on the screen. Uh, let's now see how to add some event handling so we can detect key input to log them within the browser console. All we gotta do is add a special props. Here let's put on change so we can detect every change on this text field. This prop needs a function to respond dynamically to this type of event. We'll call it title change handler and we'll define it on the top as follow. React will then execute the function when this event occurs. At first, this function will just console log the event target value, which will be every key is entered in the text field area. Now, as we type a title in the text field, we have log showing up on the console, which means that our function is being executed on every keystroke. Next, we're gonna declare a new variable title to hold the value we are logging on the console when the title change handler function is called. Now, let's try to render our title variable within one of the typography sections. You can notice that nothing happens. The title value is not reflected in our new car typography section. And that's normal because under the hood react render component only once and regular variable doesn't trigger component evaluation. So if you want to update our component, we need to use a new key concept in react, which is called states. And here we're gonna need to use the function useState. useState is a hook that will let us add a state to our function component new book. So what is a hook? A hook of is a function that let you hook into react state and lifecycle features. You can also create your own hooks to use stateful behavior. Use state is a hook that lets you add react state to function components. So here you say returns a pair. The first one is the title, which represents the current state value. And the second one is set title, a function that we'll use to update our state. Now that we have use state returning a set value called title, let's remove the title variable we defined before. To update this title say, all we need is to call the setTitle function with event target that value as a parameter. 
So now if we go back to the screen and put a new title, we will see that the changes are reflected within the section just below. Back to our code, let's add here a new props value that we will use to bind the value of this text field with our title state. The use state hook function have only one argument, which is the value of the initial state. So let's initialize our title state with the following value. This is a default title. And here on the screen, we can notice the same value displayed within the text field and the typography section. Let's make some cleaning. By removing the typography section here, I will also take off the ID and I will add some margin for a better look. We will need another text input for the author of the book, so we will simply copy past the title text field line. Let's also remove the author typography section and make the needed changes. We will declare author change handler as a function to handle this on change event, and let's also set the value and the label to author. We will follow the same steps for the title. We will declare our author change handler function that will be triggered on every keystroke. We will add a new use state hook with author as a state and set author as a function to set its value. We don't need a default state, so let's initialize both states with an empty string. And then let's call the set author function within the author change handler to update the author value on every change. Next, you will need to install the React Developer Tools, which is a Chrome DevTool extension. This extension will allow us to inspect the React component hierarchies, to edit props and states on the fly within the Chrome Developer Tool. Here, as you can see, we have the structure of our app, with the card component located under the new book component and the app component as a parent of all. On the right section of the DevTool screen, we have our new book states, which represent the title and the author state. So if we set a new text within this title or the author text field, the React states are immediately updated. We can as well update the state from the DevTool section. That change will then be reflected into the text field. Let's now go back to our VS Code. We will create a new constant called book to initialize of type book. So let's keep all its field on empty string or zero and for the start date, let's simply set its value to new date. We can use this constant to initialize the title and the author state by simply accessing those fields. But we can also make things better. We'll create a new use state hook to handle a state of type book. And let's give the use state function the constant we just created as the default value. So now we'll be able to set the state of our object book using the function set book. There is no more set author and set title now. We will need to change the value of the text field by prefixing title and author with our new state book. Then we should replace the set title call with the new function set book. This function call will be a little bit different. We need to change the set of the title but also to preserve all the values of the other fields. So prev book here is presenting the old set of our book that we will be using to return the new set with the new title. Same thing for setting the author state. We will keep all the old fields and change only the author. Back to Chrome, we can see that the title and the author field are empty at start. Let's put book one as a title. And if we go look into the DevTool window, this time we notice that we have only one state of type book. All its fields are set to empty or zero, except the start date, which is set to today's date. Makes sense because our initial value is new date. This title however, has been updated into book one. Let's now set the author to Karim, and straight away, the field author of our book set is updated with the same value. For the summary section, the user will for sure need to describe the book within some lengthy paragraph. For this purpose, we'll choose the MY text area auto size, a component that is automatically adjustable. Let's copy past this line of code. Let's then edit the placeholder as follow. And let's add a new value props set to book summary. We will as well need the event handling props, so let's put on change as event with the function summary change handler. Following that, we'll define our function, same as we did before, for the title and the author. We'll call the set book function to keep the old book state and change this time the summary with the brand new value we are receiving here. Back to the interface, we have now a new text area that is bound with the summary say, as we can observe on the right of the screen. Let's now make some fast cleaning by removing the no more needed summary typography section. Likewise, we're gonna make the same changes for the writing section. We'll add a new props value that will link to the book summary field, 
then we will add an on change props with a function that we'll call write change handler. We'll define this function so we can update the book state with the new summary value, same as before. Let's select four stars, and once again, the state was updated with the writing value to four. Next step is the progress slide bar, and once again, nothing complicated, same as before. We will need the value props set to book.progress and an onChange props with the new function progress change handler, exactly the same code as for the writing section, except this time updating the progress field within our book state. Back to our interface, sliding the progress bar, we can observe that the changes are happening within the state in real time. Now we'll see how we can integrate a date picker into our form. For that, we will need to install a new npm package by executing the following command on your terminal. npm install at my slash xdatepickers. And then let's install another package, which called date.js. We're gonna now search for a date time picker with my and simply copy past this selected block of code into our form. Don't forget to add all the missing imports. I'll modify the input format into die slash month slash year because this is the French format. I'll change the label as well for something more explicit as started at. The value props will be pointing to our start date book field and the on change event props to a function that will name started date change handler. Let's define the handling event function for our date picker. We call set book function to set the new value of our start date as follow. Then for the date picker we are using, we need a special date format. And for that, we're gonna need the function date.js to wrap the value of book.startDate. Thus, our date picker will be able to display the selected date on the screen. Same for the site initialization object. We're gonna make here a tiny change by calling date.toDate instead of new date. On the screen, we have today's date selected by default. The state on the right shows the same value. And now we can click and select any that we want from the date picker, as you can see. All right, now let's see how we can add an image. And with that, we can fill all the needed info so we can submit our form to add our new book into our bookshelf. We will handle this task using a simple text field. So let's copy past the title text field and customize it. Let's change the label to image URL, the on change function to image change handler. And then as we have already done, let's define the function that will be updating our book say with the image URL. To display the picture, we'll make the cart media image property point to the book.image state value. So now let's go back to our browser and let's pass an image URL into the text field we just added. As the input field is filled, the state is updated and the image of this Eureka is displayed. On the dev2 screen, we can notice that the image state was updated as well with this new value. Now we can fill every field of our form and right away our book state is getting updated. So with that, we have our form pretty ready to be submitted. So now we're gonna look for some nice button component within MUI. Let's copy and paste this block of code and change the button text from success to add book. Let's then update our form tag element. We'll add an unsubmit property with the name of the function to handle this operation. We'll name it submit form. Let's define it just a little bit above. First, we need to cancel the default action that belongs to the event by calling prevent default on the event param. Then we'll try to log our book object into the console just before setting to default its state using the constant we declared previously. One last thing, we need to add a property name type value to submit to our add button. Now, if we go back to the screen and click on this button, the form is submitted, the content is cleared and set to default. And if we look into the console, we have our book object displayed as you can see. At this step, we have our form collecting user inputs for a new book. What we want now is to make this new book part of the list we have on our bookshelf. So first guys, we need to understand a key concept of React, which is called lifting the states up. So let's recap a bit. Here we have our main component app.tsx, which holds two child components. The first one that we've developed in this video, which is the new book component. And the second one is that we've seen in the previous video, which is the book card component. So the purpose here is to take the data that the user will input into the form of our uh, new book component, so we can create a new card to be added into our bookshelf. So 
Here, as you can see in this block of code, uh, we have our bookshelf that is constructed from a list of book objects. Each one is represented via the book card. Here, looking into this representation, the easiest way is to take the data of our cat book from the new book.tsx and pass it to our book card.tsx. But this is not how things work in React. There is no direct connection between child's components. The only connection possible here is from parent to child or child to parent. Our cat book states or data is going to be lifted to the app component that is going to mix it with the existing book list and pass it again to the book card component. Here, this book list variable that is defined on the top of our app component represents the static data of our existing books. And as we aim to make this list updatable on every book form submission, the use of a React hook is needed. So we're gonna convert our book list from a simple variable into a React state. We're gonna keep this list as the default value with which our state is initialized. Let's give it a new name, in a book list. Next, let's define our new state with books as its name and set books as the name of the function we'll be using to update this state. Let's now replace the props we passed to the book card component from the constant to the books state. Nothing changed on the screen, even if we are using this state instead. And this is simply because our state doesn't change and keep its initial value, which is the old constant book list. We're gonna create a new prop on add book within the new book component. Let's pass to it a function that we'll call add book handler that we will define here in our app component. So let's give it a book object as a parameter and then call the set book to update our list book states, adding to it this new book. In the book component, we're gonna accept the on add book prop parameter. This prop parameter is handling a function. So to make things proper here, let's give this prop a type. Let's call it new book props and then let's define our type. It will contain on add book, which is a function taken as a param book and does not have a return. If you forgot, this function is the one we defined before in the app component and which will be updating its list book states. Let's then call our function props on add book when submitting our form and give it as a param the book object we logged before on the console. This will automatically trigger on add book function that we received as a prop within the new book component, which represents the add book handler function that was defined within the parent app component. Let's go check our interface now and fill the list of info presented on the book card form. Let's select an image URL, a title, an author, some dummy text as a summary, a rating, let's pick some dummy date as well and slide to 100% using the progress bar. On the DevTools section on the right of the screen, we can see that all those information were stored within the state. So now let's click on the add button to submit this new book. And voila! As you can see, our cat book was added to our bookshelf as wanted. So this is it guys for today's video and I hope that it was very interesting and very useful and that now you feel more comfortable and more ready to start developing your own React application with all those features and concepts we learned. Please don't forget to follow this channel so you can get notified when I be releasing the next video in which I guarantee we're gonna put our bookshelf application on a new level. So keep coding guys, and à la prochaine!